Welcome back to Ben's Garage. Hopefully you can hear me. We're sat in the Range Rover. I've got this. Anyone who's in France will know what this is. Um, it's past its CT, so equivalent is an MOT in the UK. Um, there was a couple of advisories. Rear discs and brakes, uh, discs and brakes, rear discs and pads. Uh, the front headlights are starting to get a little bit cloudy on the top because it's they're the plastic headlights on these and they go a bit in the sun. Um, there's a number plate light, doesn't work. One of the tyres has got a little nick in the side of it. And it says something about triangle to a bra to suspension. There's, it says deterioration and silent block between the chassis and the suspension on all four corners. So basically, um, it, Tina took the car in the other day actually. And um, he says, yeah, it's passed. He said it has got some advisories. I just deal with that. It's all right, we're in the car and we're gonna go for a little drive. Um, which wave goodbye to Tina. Bye! Bye for now! So yes, this is the first time I've been out in the car for ages. Feels a bit weird actually. <laughs> it feels like I shouldn't be driving it. But obviously we're all legal. But um, yeah, so he said when she went to pick the car up, um, I'm, I'm just going nice and slow, let it warm up. He said when he put the suspension on the maximum height, there's a little bit of play in the top of the suspension mountings on all four corners. But uh, it's like when we was in the UK doing MOTs, like on Range Rovers, you didn't test the suspension on fully extended height. Uh, you, do, you set it to normal height and then you test it for play like that, basically. <coughs> but um, yeah, just advisories. The rear discs and pads, I'll change those in the new year. Uh, number plate light, I mean that would have been a fail in the UK but one of them's working so it's an advisory. I shall do that, it probably just wants tapping <laughs> and it'll come back on. Uh, but I shall just pop them out, clean them up, put them back together again. It feels a bit weird driving the car because I say, I don't know if I've been out French junctions, a lot of them are terrible. <laughs> They've got signposts and hedges all at the ends and you can't really see what's going on. This is the new shop, our local shop. There's a few cars parked outside. We've yet to go in there. I did message them and say, are you wheelchair friendly? And they were supposed to be uh, sorting wheelchair access out. But yeah, so um, I'll change the discs and pads. I'll video it, obviously. Uh, there are some products that you can get for doing your headlights. Uh, it's not bad on this one. It's it's at the top of the headlight. It's not on the face of the headlight. So it wouldn't affect the beam at the moment. Obviously, they'll get worse and worse. But uh, so there's some there's quite a few products on the market so I'll look into getting something and we'll we'll have a little session on the headlights get them all nice and cleaned up but yes it's nice to be out in the Range Rover to be honest and it still drives as marvelous as it ever did um, Tina filled the, filled the uh, tank up the other day see it's just being on lockdown I mean we've been released we don't have to have a natter station anymore but there is a curfew we've all got to be indoors by 8 o'clock at night what that's gonna achieve, I do not know, because people are still mixing and mingling during the day. <laughs> but, um, oh, I digress. I've lost my train of thought now. What was I saying? Oh yeah, um, 
Tina's just been doing short journeys up to the, the supermarket. I mean, it's a good 10 kilometers, but it's, it doesn't really get the car stretching its legs. Um, and she went to start it the other day and it, it sounded a bit sluggish. Now it's got a super big battery on this car and I know we're not using it as regular as we have been at, in the past, but um, so what I'm doing today is I'm having to drive over to mum and dad's, drop some uh, presents off for Christmas day. Uh, I'll, I won't video all the way there because it's about a 40 minute drive, but I'm trying out, um, there's a GPS function on the action cam. And I thought I'll try that out and see how interesting that'll be. It was a little bit of a drive along video. You can see how fast I'm driving, what route I'm taking. Hopefully, if it all works. <laughs> so it'll be a bit more interest for these drive along videos. I've not done one of these for a long time. Um, a lot of people did say that they quite enjoyed just having a drive and a chat, basically. But um, I've not prepared a script. There's that collie dog. Now that goes up past our house, so he, he does the miles, that dog. Look there, not well. But uh, yeah, so it's a glorious day. It's 10 degrees outside today. Um, it feels a bit weird going for a drive on my own because normally I've got Tina with me. Luckily, I'm going to mum and dad so they can get the wheelchair out of the boot for me uh, and I can get out at the other end. Um, sharp bend. Now I've got to be careful because because I've not been in the car for a long time. <laughs> you forget how fast it's going because it is so smooth this car. You know even on these bendy roads you, you forget how fast you're going and it's quite easy to go a bit too fast and you never know where the cameras are. Obviously the static ones you do but um, you see uh, we're in a 70 kilometer an hour, hour, a 70 kilometer an hour limit at the moment. So this says 70 here, right? So we've dropped down to 70, but I'm only doing 60. And then about 300 meters up the road, we've got the village sign. Now, if the village sign has got a red board around it, that's 50 kilometers. It's just a, an unwritten rule. So it's a 50 kilometers all the way through this village and then we get out the other side and it's back to national speed limit which at the moment is still 80 kilometers uh, in this part of France. Some um, departments have taken it upon themselves to put the national speed limit back up to 90 kilometers. Uh, I don't think they've done it here yet. Um, so and <laughs> I have had a couple of speeding tickets and the worst thing was, the last speeding ticket I got, we knew the camera was there, but I had mum and dad in the car, Tina was in the car, we was going to Limoges, and you just, I thought we was doing 80 kilometers an hour, and you get talking, don't you? Oh, there's a camera there. Anyway, a few days later in the post, then comes a bill. So we're now on the national speed limit, so we can get up to 80 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Which, that's it, doesn't feel very fast. <laughs> oh, a Lada Neva, is it? The 4x4? Don't see many of them about. But yeah, it, uh, it does feel a bit odd going out on my own. I've got my phone. <laughs> got my masks. I've also got, you'll find this funny, a carton of milk. <laughs> it's not survival techniques. Mum and Dad don't drink milk in their, t in their tea or coffee, <laughs> and I do. So uh, I phoned Dad up this morning, I said, are you in today? I'm going to pop over, drop some Christmas presents. We are actually going over there for Christmas Day, but um, I can't fit these presents in the car with the dogs in the wheelchair. So we're, um, I'm just having a drive out. Tina wants me out of the house anyway. She wants to wrap some Christmas presents up. and. Uh, so I thought, I was just going to go for a bit of a drive around the countryside, but I thought to myself, well, I'll get these presents popped over to mum and dad's today. We're not locked down anymore. Um, and I'll go and see mum and dad for a little bit and um, give Tina peace and quiet for the afternoon. <laughs> oh, I've done, look, we're doing 100 kilometers an hour. I need to put the, uh, the 
blower on. On the windscreen. We're just steaming up a little bit. I've got the window, I normally have a window cracked open, but you'll not hear a word I'm saying if I've got that open. So I've got two cameras on the go today. I've got one vaguely pointing out towards the front and one pointing at me. So I have a little bit of messing about to do with the editing. So now we're coming into Nexon. This is our nearest sort of large town with a big supermarket and uh, all bits and pieces. A stop sign. You must always stop at a stop sign in France if the gendarmes catch you not stopping. Uh, you will get pulled over and fined. I suppose a lot of countries are like that, but obviously in the UK they sort of turn a blind eye to a lot of minor traffic offences, but uh, in France they do like to give you a fine. It's like when you get a speeding ticket. Um, I mean, I've got a French driving licence. Now, I wouldn't have bothered, I didn't need one at the time, but the UK, years ago, UK licence um, was on a paper licence, and then they changed it to a card, which expired every 10 years, which I suppose is a bit of a money-making scheme. Um, <coughs> France has now gone that way, but luckily, uh, so I exchanged my English license for a French license, which turned up, and it was the old-fashioned paper one. Um, now Tina's got a French driving license; she's got the card one, and that ex that's every ten to fifteen years, I think, you have to change that. My paper one, I don't have to change it. I don't even have to change the address on it. Um, now in the UK, the reason I did get the card one was because I changed the address, and the paper ones weren't no longer were no longer available. So. Um, we had to obviously upgrade to the card. So you get your French license, you start off with 12 points. Um, so you get maximum points. <laughs> so, ah! Whereas in the UK, the more points you get, the worse it is. But in, the France, in France, you start off with 12, and every time you get caught for a traffic offence and you get fined and they award, they, they take points off of you. Um, the last speeding ticket I got, I was, it was, I was doing 87 kilometres an hour in a 80. Uh, it was, four, if I paid it almost straight away, it was 45 euro fine and one point, uh, which should have come off by now because that was, that was last year actually. We had a, um, oh, I see what Tina means now. This place to my left is. Um, Polder Cirque, which we're not quite sure what it is, but um, a load of carnies. They come sometimes have a big top set up in there, uh, and this one looks like it's going to be a permanent big top. It's like a steel frame. Yeah, looks quite good. Um, so I don't know actually what they're doing there. Whether it is a, just a permanent circus or they're teaching or whatever, I don't really know. A point of interest in Nexon. <laughs> it looks like I've got Darby and Joan in front of me. Oh god. I'll keep away from them. Of course it's this time of day now where everybody's what time is it? It's nearly two o'clock so people are all going back to work from their two hour lunch break. Um, The French don't tend to drink so much with their lunches now. There was a big, a big uproar when I first moved to France. There was a, a oh, I won't, it might have been when I come out on holiday actually one year. Um, Mum and Dad took us to a restaurant where they used to live, and the, the pizza restaurant was upstairs, and downstairs was a bar. Of course, we come walking up to the bar. There was about ten to twelve gendarme motorbikes parked up out front. It's like, what's going on in here? So anyway, we goes in. They're all stood at the bar, <laughs> drinking brandy. <laughs> While on duty, obviously, because they're all on their motorbikes. Anyway, I think when I moved out to France, there was a big uproar because uh, they were stopping the gendarmes from drinking spirits, and they could, but they could still have a beer or a wine with their lunch, <laughs> drinking on duty. Uh, but I think that's all stopped now. I don't think they're allowed to drink at all while on duty. It's, um, it's just a bit funny the way things are over here. You know, 
it is like stepping back in time with a lot of, uh, you know, apart from these houses they keep building. I mean, there's another new one there. See, the French stuff, oh, this video is going to be a bit of a ramble. Um, and I've got to remember where I'm going, actually. Dad did say to me this morning, do you remember the way to come? <laughs> we have been there a few times before, but I can't remember the last time I went there. I think the last time I probably went out in the car was March. But uh, anyway, yeah, so another weird thing in France is all these new builds. Like the French do not like to renovate old properties. Uh, that's why they like a lot of the expats coming over here, because obviously us Brits, we like to... Oh, that little run-down house is a bit of a bargain. Let's snap it up and we'll renovate it. Uh, there, there you go. But yeah, a lot of things in France, it, it is very backwards. It's like, I'm doing 80 kilometers now and this pillock has cut in front of me with like one car length between me. There's more than that. But, and where's he got? He's over, there's a junction coming up and he's trying to overtake again. This is the trouble with France. All this space and people have to drive three to four inches off your back bumper. <laughs> Whether it's because, oh, no, no, no. Oh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to catch that. It's just overtake, you can't see what's coming around the corner. Unbelievable, and now we're, gonna, we're at a junction. This car probably isn't going the same way that he's going, but they're just desperate. I don't think it's quite as bad as Italy, but, um, oh, she's going the same way as him, but we're out on, if they turn left, they're onto a big main road and they could have overtaken easily up there. I'm going straight over. We're still on country roads. It's pretty much country roads all the way, really. Um, of course, I'm hitting the lunch lunch traffic. I've never seen so much traffic in all my life. better now that we've pumped the tyres up. <laughs> you know what they say about mechanics in their own cars? It's like builders in their own houses. They never tend to get finished. Apart from my dad's out, you know, mum and dad's, I mean, dad's pottering away quite nicely on their house and they're getting it decorated. Now there's a pillock on a bike here. Never trust these cyclists, especially ones that are wandering about all over the road. Um, yeah, mechanics in their cars. <laughs> uh, Tina was out in it. She said, I've had a warning pop up. She says, tyre pressure's low. Obviously, he's got tyre pressure monitoring on the car. Um, I said, oh, we've had the car for quite, a, not quite two years. It'll be two years at the end of eight, next April. Uh, <laughs> we've never checked the tyre pressures. I think because we've got the tyre pressure monitoring on it, you tend not to um, slow down. You tend not to sort of do things like that until it tells you that it needs doing, which is a bit naughty. No preventative maintenance and all that kind of thing. Uh, if I'd have been driving the car, I'd have might have felt it pulling one way or the other. Anyway, Tina had to take it for the CT, as I've already mentioned. I said, well, we'll, we'll get out, because you don't want something flashing on the dashboard, because that'll prompt them to look at a fault or look for a fault. So we pumped the tyres up. We pump these tyres up for the um, unladen weight of the car. Uh, there's two weights, there's a plate in the door shut here. There's one that's just for, for like four people and all, or three people, and there's one for four people and fully loaded. So we do it with the unloaded, because we don't very often load the car up. So it's 33 PSI in the front, 36 in the back. Uh, the front ones were down to about 24. <laughs> and the back ones are about 28. Um, so it does actually drive quite nice now. <laughs> there is a little bit of a wobble, I just noticed when I put my foot down. Um, but it has had that since we have had the car and it only does it on certain road surfaces. Now when we went to look at the car, there was a bit of damage on one of the wheels and he said that um, the reason we couldn't have the car, you know, it was gonna be a week to a fortnight, was because they was um, having that wheel refurbished, which 
it's been done and it was, you know, you can't tell it's had a scuff or it's been damaged or anything. Um, it's all been balanced up and, you know, driving like this, you can't tell, but when you get, when you put your foot down, like you get onto the motorway, you put your foot down and you're sitting at 130 kilometers an hour, it doesn't do it, it's as smooth as you like, but sort of just accelerating through the 110, 120, you can just feel a little bit of a wobble on it. Um, I'm not too worried about it. If it comes to it, <coughs> at some point we'll swap the tyres front to back and vice versa and um, see if that makes any difference because we've got matching tyres all the way around. That's another thing in France. When he advised on the tyre, uh, I said to Tina, I, I don't really want to change the tyre because you can't just change one tyre. Unless you can get exactly the same uh, tyre that you've already got on the car, they've got to be matching across the axles. Doesn't matter front to back, they can be different. They've got to be the same across the, the axle. So the same size, type, load, speed rating, all that kind of thing, and make. There can't be different makes. But uh, So I said to Tina, I don't really want to have to change that tyre because knowing our luck we're going to take it in there and they're not going to be able to get, I think this is on Continentals at the moment, they're not going to be able to get the Continentals and then they're, they're going to want to change two tyres which the tyres are really good condition, you know, we've got lots of tread. We're not, do, we're not doing the miles, um, I, can't, I don't know how many miles we have done. Laurie, my side of the road, thank you very much. It is a narrow bridge, so I'll let him off. Uh, we're on 132,000 kilometres. I think when we bought it, it was on 124. So we've done 8,000 kilometres, which is 5,000 miles in nearly two years. Let me set that back to... She likes having it set on uh, kilometres left in the fuel tank which at the moment it's a full fuel tank and because I've just booted it it says 689 well that's normally a, fuel, a full fuel tank it's just over 800 kilometers <coughs> which is not bad I mean that's 500 miles on a foot I know it's a big fuel tank but <laughs> the petrol version would be significantly less now on a run in this car we can get over 30 miles to the gallon but you start getting your foot down burying your foot in the carpet, so to speak, um, the old fuel consumption does come down a little bit, but you can expect that, you've got, I mean, especially now, we're, we're about 310 horsepower, the car weighs 2.7 tonne, and to pull the car around at the speed that it does, I think the engine does quite well, so when you do start, speed bump, when you do start getting your toe down, You've got to expect a, a drop in fuel consumption. But, uh, yeah, it's another little village. It's a 50 kilometer an hour, kilometer, 50 kilometers an hour, all the way through here. Yeah, it'd be nice if this, all this GPS starts working. I've got to upload it into a different bit of software, but then once I've, and then you can, uh, overlay the GPS data on the video and um, and then what I should do is I should drag it over into my usual editing program and edit both the cameras together and see what to, hopefully it will uh, look all right but uh, yeah so it's a glorious day it's got up to 11 degrees slow down we're not out of the 50 yet now I, I the way lockdown has worked and they've released us, we don't need the other stations anymore. Before they, uh, Tuesday I think it was, before then we could only go 20 kilometres from our house for purposes of exercise or seeing the doctor going shopping, getting the car CT'd. Uh, the first lockdown, um, they extended your CT's, I think like in the UK they extended your MOT for six months was it I think, something like that. Um, but the second lockdown, you can take your car in for its CT. Luckily, it passed because uh, I don't really fancy getting on the floor. We've got the Audi sat in the garage, as you probably know. That's all stripped down, so we're not can't really move that at the moment until the parts turn up. 
which shouldn't be too much longer. But so if this was to fail, I'd have to, you get two months, unless it's a major, major fail that it's dangerous to drive. Um, most failures, you get two months to fix it. And when if you take it back for a retest within the two months, uh, it's free of charge retest. If you if it's after that, then you've got to pay a full fee again, which was 72 euros. <coughs> All booked online, paid online. Tina just turned up and the bloke actually said, oh, you've paid online. So that was a, all good, but um, yeah, luckily it passed. I, I thought it would, um, and let's say a lot of these advisories that they, they dish out, it's uh, it's just covering their own ass. I mean, in, in the UK, it's a common thing now, people doing advisories, but when I first started working in the garage, it was either a pass or fail. Uh, and the boss that I was working for at the time, he used to write advisories out in a little receipt book with a bit of carbon paper, write his advisories on it with all the car details, uh, pull the top one out, give that to the customer and he's got one in the book then. And if there's ever any comeback, say well, because there's a big misconception, people take their car for an MOT or a CT and they think that's it, the car's roadworthy then for the next year or in the case of a CT, two years. Um, that's not the case. The car only has to pass, uh, be a passable standard for the MOT or a CT on the day that it's presented. So if a, t a car comes in and the tyre is bang on the legal limit, you can't fail it, you have to advise on it. Um, now we used to do a lot of MOTs for car dealer up the road. So if there was any anything like that, it was an advisory. Um, make sure you've got an advisory. If it, you know, some cars used to fly straight through and they'd be as good as gold. Other cars, as you can imagine, from a second-hand car dealer, they're trying to make a profit. They don't want to do a lot of jobs on it. So it would um, cover your own ass basically. But then obviously when the MOT's got computerized and all that kind of thing, there was a thing where you could put advisories in and all that kind of thing. Whereas on the, um, the French CT, you've got uh, major fails and then you've got minors. Uh, and the minors you don't have to fix. So it's just an advisory, obviously. So yeah, we're coming now into Pierre Buffier. Uh, it's a funny little town this. I'll switch the camera off when we get out the other side. Uh, so I don't know if this camera is going to pick any of this up. <laughs> it's basically it's built on the side of a hill. <laughs> and uh, we're just coming up to the bottom of the hill. And then we'll be going all the way up through the village. I think it's, it's, it's a big village. It's not a town. Um, and it's all uphill. All the way. Right to the, out the other side. And then out the other side there's a, an Axiom factory. Well they're not Axioms. They're similar. They're voiture sans permis. Which is basically a car you don't need a licence for. Um, you can get Axioms in the UK, but you still need a licence for them in the UK. And in the UK they're not restricted. Whereas in France they're, they're uh, speed restricted. So here we go, we're uphill now. It's quite a funny little place. I don't know why, it just always seems a bit odd driving through here. Uphill, all the way. With speed limit. Oncoming traffic. <laughs> this used to be parking all the way along here, but then they've they've changed it now and they've got parking bays at certain points of the road. Yeah. I don't know if the GPS side of this is gonna have elevation on it. Oops, school bus. door open so I had to give him a wide berth. Yeah if, if the GPS has, GPS has got elevation it will uh, show how high we're climbing. Well, we're still going up. I think it levels out a little bit in a minute. Ooh, can't see it's a bit bright. It's so nice driving this car. 
if anyone's thinking about getting a Range Rover, don't think about it, just do it. <laughs> but watch, watch my previous videos on what to sort of look for and budget for, because if you get a bad one, you could be in for a whole, whole heap of hurt. <laughs> and we're still going uphill. We're coming out of the village, we've got the gendarmes up here on the left hand side. Um, and we're still climbing. When we get past the gendarmes, it levels out a little bit. They've all got their Christmas, um, they'll put like these lights, Christmassy lights up on the street lamps. Um, there's the gendarmerie. It's always shuttered up. Never looks very open. So to my left, other side of these houses is the motorway. That's the A20, which you know goes from north to south quite a long way. It's, if you get on the A20 going anywhere, you could be on it for quite a long time. Um, when we used to go to Mum and Dad's old house, we used to turn left just here, get onto the motorway, and have a good blast. But their new house is up here through the countryside. So this is the Axiom factory on the left, Chateauneuf. And then there's a tractor dealer, and then up here, out in the middle of nowhere, is a car wash. <laughs> French love their car washes. Basically, in France, it is um, illegal to wash your car at home. I know not many people pay attention to it, but uh, it is actually uh, illegal to wash your car. And so all these car washing places, like over here on the um, left here, they all have to use recycled water. So we're out of the 50, we're now at 70. And we're still going uphill actually. Well, I think this is the top of the hill just here. So we're now out of the 70, put my foot down. Oh, that's 80. <laughs> oh, but I don't know if you can see any of this countryside. Let me take this camera down and I'll see if I can show you. It's really nice out here, it's all hilly and apple trees with mistletoe all over them, look. <coughs> but yeah, this is a this is a route nationale, this road, it's it's like quite a main road. Um, and look, one car. This to the left is a, what they call an air. And then that's off the motorway to get access to that. But yeah, rolling countryside. Got to pay attention to where I'm going now. So there you go. Plenty of sheep in the field. There's a few sheep in this part of France. Not too many, not like Yorkshire or somewhere like that. But um, yeah, so I'm going to wrap this video up now, it's probably gone on for quite long enough, so I'll shut this camera down. Um, I'm just going to be coming into another uh, 70 mile an hour limit, a kilometre an hour, should I say. So we'll slow down for that. So yeah, sign off. Hope you've enjoyed this little video. A bit of a drive and a chat. You've learned some things about France and the French control technique. And uh, yeah, be interesting to see what the footage looks like with the GPS overlay. And uh, I'm just about to turn off this road now. So it's gonna be country roads from now on till we get to mum and dad's. And you've all seen that from there as well. So I'll sign off. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And from me and the Hobbit who's not here. It's bye for now.